Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and I'm excited to join you guys at Zen Dragon. Michael asked me if I would talk to you guys about the horse bench. Now, the Kung Fu bench is sometimes called a horse bench because it resembles a sawhorse, and it is sometimes used like a sawhorse, but that's really just an English translation interpretation. So, really, the, the name of it is called Cheng Kyu Dang, and that directly translates to a long bridge bench or stool. And it is a really common stool that you would find all over China. It would be in restaurants, bars, in the house. This was just a common construction. Now, the thing about it is there's really no specific length for this because it was something that was everywhere. So if you were to use this as a weapon, you would need to be able to use it if it was really long, really short, uh, really heavy, or really light. So you'd have to be able to adapt to it. But it's really a nice weapon for self-defense because this is something that you could rely on that you didn't have to carry around. So even if you didn't have anything that you could defend yourself with, you go to a restaurant or you go to a bar and somebody attacks you, you have something right there, the best seat in the house. All right, let's go over some techniques. First, let's go over the grip. Now, it, the best way to practice this is just have the bench on the ground and you're going to grab the legs closest to you. So notice my thumbs are pointing down. I'm just gonna grab right here. And then I'm going to hold this right by the bench seat. Now the first couple techniques I wanna show you involve using the plank for the bench seat itself. So we're either going to be using this side edge along here, the front edge or the top edge, or the seat itself, okay? Now you can think of using these as a lot of blocking techniques and in self-defense, that's a good idea to start with, but you also need to understand that these are very useful attacking techniques, whether you want to push an opponent away or just straight up hit them, okay? So from my uh, original grip right here, what I'm going to do is work with this side edge and we're gonna work with a forward thrust. So I can just punch straight out with both hands right here, lots of power. I could be attacking towards the throat, the head, the upper body, it really doesn't matter where you're gonna hit is going to hurt, okay? So right here, a forward thrust. I can also use this to hit sideways. If I go straight up and down, I can press this way. I can also use the same idea at an angle. This can be more seen as a blocking technique, but it's also very useful to come up underneath and strike up towards the jaw. So I can press up this way here. Now, I can also use it to press downward. So if somebody's attacking low or somebody is trying to move in underneath, maybe they're trying to hook in and try to grab, grab me to take me down, I can slam down over the top. From here, I have it for sideways. I can press to the side. And then um, some, one of the other things, one of the most important ones, is using that front edge right here, just like a punch. Now, sometimes you can punch this way, but the problem is if you have the double hand grip and you're punching like this, you have to watch out. You might hit yourself with the bench leg. So it's better to punch out with the legs pointing in front of your own body. The way that we can punch with the legs up is to let go for a single hand good reach and thrust forward here. Now the nice thing about this attack is we can hit towards the throat, we can hit towards the face, but also one of the better techniques is to actually strike down and hit towards the shin or towards the knee. This is a really main technique. Now using the legs is also one of the best attacking strategies when using the Kung Fu bench. It is a really strange angle and then it makes, it'll work its way around somebody's guards. So even when they try to put their hands up or even if they try to grab and control one side of the bench, this can work its way around somebody's guards and it's very unpredictable. So the legs make for great striking surfaces as well. Some of the things that you may see here are a, are a downward smash, whether I'm trying to move forward and go over the top and hit the head or just try to control the limbs or blocking a weapon using the stable of uh, this cross beam. I can do that. Or I can swing horizontal and strike. This is one of the most useful ones. I can come up underneath the person's guards to strike up like an uppercut. When you're using the legs, you can also change your grip. And this is one of the most useful ways to do it. 
I can grab the bench seat in between the legs, but closer to one side. And then I can use this to chop down. And then you can either switch sides like this to chop down, or you can just turn your hands around. <laughs> I can also swing horizontally with this. It can go straight down, diagonal, or horizontal when I use this way. The only thing about that is it does utilize both arms and it tends to have a large motion, which may open you up after your technique. So you better be ready to move fast. Another thing that a lot of people try to do is to swing outward with the standard grip and let go with the hand or try to think of swinging like a tonfa. This is a good idea, but bad in practice unless you always hit your opponent. The risk here is that if I miss my opponent and the bench keeps traveling, this leg will hit my arm and that could have some serious consequences. In the least, I'm gonna let go of the bench, okay? So the way that you can do this outward swing is a simple modification of the grip. I'm going to take the hand that I'm gonna swing that side to and turn it around. Now I have a nice area to swing this bench. And you will see this in some of the big swinging techniques where we go around the head and then strike or sweep. The last thing that we can use is the legs to hit, and it's similar to our position when we do, when we're using the bench seat to strike, but we can swing the legs. So here I can swing the legs and hit to the side, just as if I'm swinging a weapon or double weapons in this case. So I can swing across this way. Even when it looks like a press, I can still be hitting with the legs right here, okay? And then when we wanna do the fancy grip change, I can also strike outward with the bottom, so to stamp horizontally here. These techniques are a little bit more rare that you would actually have to use this, but it's good to get used to using the bench in different configurations. One thing that you will probably never use or see is holding the bench here. <laughs> and very rarely would you hold the bench here. It's not usually taught this way. It's always taught staying closer to the plank itself. Now, self-defense is a context of fighting. So if you were using this in a self-defense situation, you have to look at what's most likely the case of you needing to protect yourself. You're not gonna be out on the battlefield, so you don't really have to worry about big swords or spears. Typically, you would be using the bench as self-defense against an unpredicted attack. So somebody that's going after you with just their bare knuckles. If somebody's going to try to fight you, you wanna increase your chances of survival, you grab whatever you have in your surroundings. So grabbing a bench. Or if worse, they have a knife or even a short stick. These would be more common attack scenarios, though you can't take out you know, the chance of maybe some crazy person shows up with a sword. But most of the techniques are designed to defend against common situations where somebody's going to try to attack you. If they have uh, no weapon and they're trying to punch and kick you, these techniques can be used not only to try to control and then strike, which I would say just go straight in for your striking. They're gonna have to worry about your weapon. But it's also a really nice way if somebody's trying to grab your weapon. So if they're grabbing, if they're trying to control me, I have the weapon, they're trying to move in and stop me from hitting them, they're grabbing my arm, I can come over the other side, press down and then follow up with a strike here, okay? Otherwise, if they have their hands up and I just want to clear the arms, hit them out of the way, and then follow up with a thrust, maybe a smash down, I have that availability too. If they have a knife, your, your, your focus is going to be placed more on using this as a barrier between you and the blade. Though you have more reach with this weapon, they have a more devastating effect with just a simple touch. So you want to try to use this to knock at the hand and try to remove that blade or use this to keep a barrier so they just can't reach you with that knife. When it comes to a short stick, 
that's when you're going to employ more blocking techniques. That's just how it's going to work out. Somebody's gonna try to feel and try to move in on you. They're gonna try to make you move and react. So your movements have to remain smaller and you have to rely on blocking until you have the moment to move in and strike. A short stick will be more maneuverable and faster in combat than a horse bench. So when you're using the Kung Fu bench, you have to choose your openings wisely because if you miss, the consequences are going to be more severe for you than them, okay? Also, don't forget, once this is in your hands, it's not all you have. Some of the techniques that you'll see is actually in the form, you'll, you'll move in from pressing down and then a side kick from there. Or you can just let go for a second and strike if you need to. There's lots of different options that you have with the bench for self-defense. It's not just here. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope it answers a lot of your questions about the Kung Fu Bench. And I'd like to thank Michael again for giving me a chance to be on here and collaborate with him. This is uh, something I absolutely love is Kung Fu and all the weird different weapons that you don't usually see. So thanks a lot for letting me share some of my information and I'll see you guys next time. After years of free content, the time has come where I need a helping hand from some of you. You can support me with $3 each month or 5 or 10 for a few extra benefits. Supporting Sendragon via Patreon will probably make no difference to you financially. If you're living hand to mouth, I don't want your money. Then I'd rather you keep them for yourself. Don't worry, I'll be alright. The donations are in place to help cover equipment and other expenses for the channel. Now that I'm also a father, it's more challenging than ever to find the time to create and share free content. But if enough of you support on Patreon, there will come a day where I can cut down my 9 to 5 job either partially or altogether which will make it sustainable to continue creating and sharing free content here on YouTube. Even if that does not happen, I'll still continue sharing but possibly with longer breaks in between. Thanks for listening, now visit my Patreon, that's patreon.com slash sendragon. I greatly appreciate you for listening and for continually watching Send Dragon.